Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. You know the rest. Did you know that global warming is in the Bible? Hey, maybe Al Gore is on to something, or uh, Greg Thornburg. Oh, wait. Oh, I mean Greta. I bet you it was born Greg, but hey, who am I to judge? Revelation 16. Let's read it. Verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials, the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Ooh, vials that has the wrath of God. They're going to get poured upon the earth. Ooh, don't sound good, don't it? No, uh-uh. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. And no, I don't think the V is the mark. At least, not yet. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Now there's a group of people that call themselves preterists. And what they'll do is say, well, you know, the Bible, uh, the Catholic Church did blah, blah, blah. And they want you to think everything in the Bible is in the future. Well, preterists say everything is in the past. They'll tell you, Mal Matthew 24 is all past. Now, granted, a lot of Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD with the destruction of the temple. I will admit that. However, ask a preterist, when did Revelation 16 and verse 3 happen in history? Tell me. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. When did that happen? I mean, I'm a student of history. I never seen anything about that. So, you know, sometimes the Bibles, it has a partial fulfillment and then an ultimate fulfillment at a later date. What can I tell you? Sometimes the Bible's partly past, partly present, partly for the future. All right, let's go to verse 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. Uh, when did that happen, Mr. Preterist? When? I want to find that out in history. Oh, you don't know. You can't tell me. Okay, well, maybe it's the future, Mr. Everything is Past Preterist. Verse 5, And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Here we go, verse 8. Global warming. Here it is. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And the men were scorched with great heat. Huh, let's read that again. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Well, what is the sun? 
It's a big ball of fire, right? And men were scorched with great heat. Global warming. But sorry, Al Gore, it's not man-made global warming. It's God-made global warming. Via the angels, of course. The vials of the wrath of God. See, this is what they want to do. When this actually happens, they're going to blame, well, it's, it's people's fault. There's too many people in the world. Well, I'm sure the, uh, the V is going to uh, whittle down the population a little bit there. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. God made global warming. And they blaspheme the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. Huh. Is that literal, figuratively, or both? You know, when Jesus was on the cross for three hours, there was darkness over the world. Oh, yeah. Uh, where's that, Chaplain Bob? I, I never heard of that before. Oh, okay. Well, let me show you. All right, in Mark 15, Jesus is on the cross. And we're going to skip to verse 30. Well, let's do 29. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. And come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the, verse 33, Mark 15, 33, And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. For three hours, there was darkness all over the whole land. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Samach, Lama Sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias, Elijah. See, Jesus spoke Hebrew, and these Jews don't even understand what he's saying. Jesus is saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And they think he's calling for the prophet Elijah. Or Elias, the Greek rendering. Fools. But Jesus' real Hebrew name is Yeshua HaMashiach. Or Yahashua, or whatever. Whatever. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. We're back in Revelation 16. Verse 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of 
the false prophet. And this, everybody, is the unholy trinity. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Oh yeah, they're going to be doing miracles. I mean, how else are you going to get an unbelieving world to believe that even Christ, the Messiah, has come. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now, why would um, why would the Bible say into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon? I mean, if everybody spoke Hebrew, and the old uh, the New Testament was written in Hebrew, there'd be no reason to say called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon because you know why that is? Because the Greek New Testament wouldn't know what Armageddon is because it was written in Greek. But that's why it says called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. See, if the New Testament was written in Hebrew, that phrase would be unnecessary. There you go. Proof right there. New Testament was written in Greek. Called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. See, it has to let you know it's Hebrew. Armageddon is Hebrew. Because it was written in Greek. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. See, Preterists will tell you, oh, all this has happened in the past. You know, the Catholic Church hides everything, tells you everything's in the future. Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this is future. But uh, that's just one person's opinion. So, that's the end of chapter 16 of Revelation. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.